Now let's look at the other side, and that is Iran, and their leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Khamenei is Iran's grand Ayatollah. That's a religious title. It makes him the ultimate authority in theocratic Iran. He's the country's top leader, 84 years old, will be 85 this week. He's been in power since 1989, making him one of the longest serving leaders in West Asia. He holds constitutional authority over the judiciary, the army, the revolutionary guard, and the state media. So the buck stops with this man. And he is definitely the one who sanctioned the attack on Israel. He cleared it. Last week, he had promised that Israel would be quote unquote slapped. And now he claims to have delivered to the great joy of many in Iran. Take a look at this. <laughs> We were extremely happy with this action of the IRGC and, in fact, we felt better after a long time. This was a help and companionship with the oppressed people of Gaza and the West Bank. This sadness and anger remained in the hearts of all of us and we were always waiting for this revenge to be carried out and for the Israelis to be punished for their brutality. And we couldn't believe it when the news came last night. That banner with the missile you see, it is up in Tehran's Palestine Square. It has a message in both Farsi and Hebrew. In Farsi or Persian, it says the next slap will be harder. In Hebrew, it says your next mistake will be the end of your state. Dual messaging, and that's not a coincidence. It explains why the people of Iran are overjoyed, even though Israel seems relatively unharmed. Israel says the so-called slap was ineffective. They say 99% of Iran's missiles and drones were shot down. But that's not what the people in Iran are hearing. The statement announced the launch of missiles and drones to targets in occupied lands that successfully hit the targets. He's saying they successfully hit the targets. The IRGC, that's Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, issued a statement. They're like a parallel military body. Their job is to defend Iran from external and internal threats. And they report to the Ayatollah. Now, this body, the IRGC, says it successfully hit targets in Israel. And that's what the Iranian state media is now reporting. So the people in Iran are being told that, quote unquote, heavy blows have been dealt to the Israelis, especially their air base in the Negev Desert, the Nevatim Air Base, the base that was used to launch the airstrikes on the Iranian consulate in Syria. And Israel admits that some missiles did hit this base, but they say it was minor infrastructure damage. In fact, the Israelis even re released this footage later, purportedly showing the base still in use. But of course, the people in Iran do not see any of this. They saw the missiles going towards Israel. Their news channels are apparently quoting the special forces, the IRGC, saying that heavy blows were dealt to Israel. And so the people in Iran think that Ayatollah Khamenei has given a resounding response to the Israelis and they were celebrating. Which brings us to Khamenei's game plan. He could not afford to look weak. A few years back, the Americans killed Qasem Soleimani. Last week, the Israelis killed Iranian generals. The regime in Tehran was already on the back foot domestically. The economy is in a shambles. Their currency, the rial, has hit an all-time low. Inflation is touching 50%. We've seen public protests in the last few years. In 2022, there was the anti-hijab protest, where the people fought back against the Iranian regime. And it was only quelled by brute force. Given this backdrop, and now the attack on their consulate in Syria, Khamenei could not afford to look weak. He could not afford for the people of Iran or for the Iranian proxies outside to think that the regime cannot stand up to Israel. So in some ways, last night's attack was Khamenei's only option. Of course, that does not make it right. 
and it will have its own set of consequences. Khamenei may have stamped out some domestic embers of resentment, but he may have just started a fire around the world.